everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to share with you some things that I've learned um, through the process of renovating my home, doing DIYs and projects, and some of the things that, tips and tricks that I can share with you that will help you hopefully to get through this process, especially on a tight budget. I wanna give you a little background um, about my journey that I've gone on through this renovation process. So I started renovating my bathroom first in 20, I think it was 17 or 18. Next, I did the kitchen and this was in the summer. I started to tear the kitchen out in the summer of 2020. If you can believe it, that was probably one of the worst times to do renovations, mostly because everybody wanted to do renovations at the same time. We were all stuck at home and thinking about our houses and staring at our houses. And we all wanted to do something different with them and, and work on them as a project because we didn't have a lot else to do. I had um, gotten a, a home refi um, and it was a great time to do it. I was able to lower the interest rate of the, my original mortgage and also get some cash out from the equity that I had been able to uh, build up in the house. I didn't have all the money to use on the um, renovation because I had other things to pay off, a student loan, I had um, just other things, my daughter's in college. And so I decided to set my budget for my kitchen, if you can believe it, at $10,000. And um, I was able to stick to that budget. The main reason that I was able to stick to it was that uh, we did pretty much everything ourselves. Um, and when I say ourselves, I had some help. I had a lot of help from my ex-husband who has been very generous with his time in helping me to renovate this house. Um, his wife has been really generous with helping and also my brother has helped quite a bit. I've come up with a list of 15 things that I would like to share with anyone who is starting out on the renovation process or moving along the renovation process. Um, and these really especially apply to anyone who is on a very tight budget. Number one in my list is budget. And the thing about budget is that it's a relative term. It's so funny to me to hear people talk about budgets. I'm doing this project on a budget, they'll say, and then they'll say a number that's way more than I could ever hope to uh, afford uh, in any project that I do. So I think it's interesting to hear people use the word budget and then my blow my budget right out of the water. So it's a relative term. My budget's always gonna be fairly tight because I am a single mom, I'm a teacher, I have a, a daughter in college and my son is a senior in high school. He'll be going to college soon too. Um, hopefully my daughter will be really close to done with college by the time my son goes. So um, we're gonna be talking about the most the smallest budget that most of you could probably imagine. <laughs> Number two on my list is never get anything full price. This obviously goes back to the budget topic. Not all of these points are gonna be about budget, but this one goes back to the budget because if you're on a tight budget and you decide to, um, you know, you're going out to buy your materials, you might decide to get something um, brand new and pay full price for it. If you really inspect the quality of the item, you're gonna notice a lot of times that it's made with cheaper materials and maybe made in more of a shoddy fashion. And obviously that's not gonna save you money in the long run because that those items are gonna fall apart in, um, a lot quicker. They're not gonna last you for a long time. My suggestion as often as you can accomplish this is to buy things that are nicer quality, either obviously on sale, and that takes time, that takes research, that takes footwork to get out there and find those lower price items. But also, um, you may be able to get a better quality item used. Um, you may find that there are people in 
uh, higher class, <laughs> higher economic areas that are pulling their whole kitchen out just because they feel like they want a different kind of wood and their cabinets are all real wood and they would work for your kitchen. You might get lucky in that way and find something on Facebook Marketplace or through some kind of um, classifieds. Number three, shop around. This also goes with the budget. The first couple are budget items. So um, it kind of goes along with what I said before, um, not paying full price for things, but this has to do with the fact that re retailers different retailers may charge different prices, higher and lower prices for the exact same product. So you'll see boutique stores or retailers um, selling a, a product, the same exact product for a much higher price, for a much higher markup. And some of that goes back to the fact that there are people out here there who want to pay more. Is that a thing? <laughs> Because I, I, you know, you hear about that, that they feel better, that it's a better product. It's worth more to them if they pay more to, more for it. And just for the fact that it costs more money, more power to you. Good for you that you have that kind of money. But I certainly am never probably going to be in that category. So I'm always going to look for the best products that I can, that I can find for the best prices. And in order to do that, you have to shop around. Number four is resist the latest trends. So uh, this is such a hard one to do because we look at all of the uh, beautiful new trends coming out and there's something so emotionally provocative about seeing this new, beautiful, smooth, silky color or this fun print. And then you see it and you see it and you see it and you see it. And after a while, the amount of that you loved it is now the amount that you can't stand it anymore. You're tired of it and you're sick of it. I will give you a very specific example, Chevron stripes. <laughs> Didn't we all love Chevron stripes? I had Chevron stripes on kitchen chairs and it's not quite the trend anymore, is it? So, um, be really careful. Even things that are touted as classic are can be trendy. Here's the test um, of your emotion versus what you really like. Your trending emotion versus what you really, really um, will continue to like over time. Number one, it, you can't call it classic if it's nothing you've ever seen before. So if it's this new thing, um, it's probably a trend. And also if you see it everywhere, if you're just seeing that same thing everywhere, 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 it's probably going to be too trendy and it's going to fall out of favor and then it's going to look dated. Number five, find your basic styles. One thing that I've always since college um, gravitated towards is warmth, um, a worn in vintage look, um, something homey, something um, that maybe would have existed a hundred years ago. That's my style. That's always been my style. That's never changed. The subgenre of that um, a few years ago was modern farmhouse. So I really did get it very into modern farmhouse. You can probably see to the side of me that I have shiplap on my wall here. Um, and you know, you can play into a lot of those things in farmhouse, but then as the style has shifted away from farmhouse, the same aesthetic that I basically like has shifted more to cottage style. So there are some um, small tweaks and changes that I can make. I can keep a lot of the decor that I already have, but shift away from some of the things that are a little bit more kitschy about farmhouse. Maybe a big sign that says farmhouse on it. You don't mean you might not want that anymore. It's not about the farmhouse necessarily as much as it used to be, except if you actually live in a farmhouse on a farm, then you might be able to get away with that. But you probably don't need a sign that says farmhouse if you live in a farmhouse. I've always felt that way. <laughs> um, so find your basic style. If you love clean, modern lines, 
it, it may evolve over time into different trends, but your basic style is going to be clean and modern and you'll find a style that goes with it and you can make small tweaks towards that style. Next, this one's a pretty big one. This is one that I have learned the hard way. So here we go into it. Number six is go neutral on your hard surfaces. I didn't make the mistake of doing some that kind of crazy print on tile or anything like that. Some of the more bold print tiles that I thought I might have wanted a few years ago that aren't quite in trend anymore. So I was really thankful for that. I do think though that even when you pick neutrals, neutrals go out of style too. And we can see that from the grays that we loved a few years ago and most of us still have in our homes. I have gray countertops that look kind of like a concrete look. I have gray penny tile backsplash. I have gray tile on my floor in my bathrooms. And that gray's not going anywhere. I don't have the money to pull that out and redo it now that warm beiges are in style. So um, even neutral trends change and that's the trick. But the more neutral you can keep your hard services, the better you can make them blend with the new color trends that come in. Next, number seven, paint is amazing. I know I'm not the first person to have said this, but paint is completely transformative of anything you put it on. So I that's my most frequent go-to when it comes to changing the look of something is going for a different paint color. Paint is easily changed. I will say that with quotation marks because some people hate painting and they'll paint once or they'll hire out their painting because they just hate painting. The more you paint, the better you get at it, um, the more tricks you have at it. So if you like an easy um, transformation that's not very expensive, go with paint. Number eight, invest in the tools that you need in whatever way you might be able to. I have been able to get a lot of tools for free. I know this is not everybody's experience in life, but um, the uh, tools that I've gotten are from my ex-husband who has helped me with this renovation. And he, he has gifted me a lot of his older tools because he's been purchasing new tools. And it's nice for him when I have the right tools, sometimes I can do the jobs that I would have asked him to come do for me. So I think it behooves him, but it's also incredibly generous of him to give me these tools and not just go and sell them on Facebook Marketplace or whatever else. Um, and I have quite a large collection, even some of them I haven't tried out yet because I'm a little intimidated by some of the saws, I'm not gonna lie. So, um, if you don't have a wonderful, um, generous person that will give you tools, um, go out and see if you can purchase some of the more basic tools. But I use my miter saw, my jigsaw, my nail gun, um, basic things like a level, a tape measure, um, things like that. Invest in those basics. If you need something much more specific to a job, you can always rent the, the tools. So. Don't try to do trim with a hammer and trim nails. It's gonna take you forever. You're gonna get frustrated. Get a nail gun somehow <laughs> because I know people will say, oh, you can do this with a hammer and trim nails. Don't do it. Get the right tool. It's gonna to make it so much easier for you. Number nine is my heart. And that is that this is not just a job that men can do. I know that we're seeing that now, but I grew up in the older generation where this is a guy's thing. This is a guy's job. And in my mind, that was really set in there that if I wanted a big job done, I needed to call a guy to come over and do it. And they were who knew how to do it. And that's still stuck in a lot of people's minds. Um, you don't get taken seriously as a woman when you go to Home Depot sometimes. And that's really true. It's still true. Um, but you can do it. And if you watch these YouTube DIY channels, there are so many women who have inspired me to be able to learn how to do DIY. And I've watched them and I've said, if she can do it, I can do it. So 10, I'm on number 10. Be careful. This is my big warning. <laughs> for this video. Don't do anything that you're not comfortable doing. 
Don't do anything that might be dangerous. Don't do any big job 100% by yourself if you can help it. Two sets of hands go so far when it comes to balancing things and holding things up and not knocking yourself out with things. Um, make sure you research every project that you want to do and make sure you think it seems doable for you to do it and you've worked through all of the steps. Um, Try not to do anything structural. <laughs> Please don't tear down a wall if you don't know if it's load bearing. Um, electrical, sometimes you can do basic electrical things if you learn how, but if it's a bigger electrical thing, uh, be really careful. Things need to stay up to code. Number 11, I've learned this one the hard way. Don't do demo on something. If you're not sure you're ready to put it back together, <laughs> That sounds so obvious. Okay, I'm going to give you two examples sitting around my house right now of not following my own advice. Number one, this was probably six, maybe seven years ago. Instead of this big window that's here, we were going to open it up and make it a sliding glass door. And at the time, there was nothing in front of the window. It would have been very easy to do. So we tore all the bricks out under the window and that sliding glass door never got put in. We ran into some complications and that sliding glass door never got put in. So it sat there open, a very thin amount of wall material is between me and the outside air all winter for the last seven winters. Yes, it's true. And then the brick got thrown away. So I can't just put it, mortar it back on because it got thrown away. I guess we were so sure we were going to do that. I'm working on an idea for a patch job there that might look decent with siding um, right under the window. And hopefully that'll get done soon. Number 12. Networking can be your best friend if you can make it work. This has been key, absolutely key to my... Um, being able to renovate what I've renovated on the budget that I've done it on. This is not necessarily going to be something that every person um, has the, the community to be able to do. I am lucky enough that um, my ex-husband that has been helping me is from Mexico and he is in construction. So two very important communities that he belongs to. So as he goes around and does job, he's jobs, he meets plumbers, he meets electricians. So he's able to trade work or, you know, they do things for each other at a discounted rate in their off time. This can also be something that can be worked out within a church community or within a neighborhood. If you know people well, and maybe you have a skill that they could use and they have a skill that you could use, you might be able to exchange work or you might be able to do things at a discount for each other. So very, very worth the time considering how you can make that work because that has been crucial to what I've been able to do here. Number 13, be patient. I think this might be the overarching idea of this whole video is be patient. Everyone knows that renovations take time and often more time than you have thought they would take. But um, when you're doing it yourself and when you're ha when you have people helping you that you are not paying because they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart or that you're paying less. You have to work around their schedule and sometimes it could be weeks before they can come back and see you. Um, the bathroom downstairs has taken an extra long time because of that. Patience is so key. And um, going along with that, number 14 is every DIY and every project that you have. I Okay, almost every. I'm not going to say every. Sometimes some projects will go so smoothly and it'll be amazing. I don't think I've found that most of the time. <laughs> That might be 10% or less of the time. Most of the time, every project takes longer than I expected and becomes more complicated than I expected it to be. It is so rewarding though, and you learn so much. If you can think of it as a learning experience, something that's teaching you, you can get through it uh, and not throw the project across the room. <laughs> so persevere because you will learn so much from this process. Number 15, my final um, tip or piece of advice is that it's all worth it.
in the end, it is all worth it. When you get it done, even if you have to if make a mistake and you have to tear it out and you have to put it back in, whatever it might be when it's done, and you can put your pretty decor touches on everything. It is just so worth it. Sometimes you think that you're not getting a lot done. Make sure you take pictures, document the process, because when you feel like you haven't done that much in your house and then you go back and you look at those before pictures, it is so rewarding to feel like all that you have accomplished over that amount of time, it's, it's added value to my house. It has added enjoyability to my house. Uh, I feel proud of my house in hopefully not a, a bad way. And I love for people to come over and I enjoy entertaining here. So um, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know that you probably have stories too of things that you've done. I'd love to hear the wisdom that you have to impart to us. So please leave in the comments things that you've learned, things that you disagree with about me. Maybe you've had a different experience or you think I'm crazy to make whatever suggestion I made. Let me know. Leave it in the comments. I'd love to um, have that uh, discussion back and forth about the best ways to renovate, the best ways to do DIYs, and what you've learned. So please share with me. If you've enjoyed today's video, uh, I hope that you'll click the thumbs up button and give me a like and also subscribe so that you can see all the fun upcoming content I have. Um, lots of Christmas stuff coming up. I'm not going quite as early as some people on the Christmas content, but it's coming. And I'm very, very excited about decorating for Christmas. So um, please join me in my upcoming videos and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.